so hello guys uh, this video is going to be slightly different from the title and the thumbnail you is this might be clear to you that uh, in this video we are going to discuss a uh, one result uh, based on a moment of inertia and yeah i hope you all like it so uh, so first of all i'll talk about the motivation or the idea that struck to me first uh, while observing this result so we all know that that the moment of inertia for a ring of mass m and uh, radius r is i equals to m r square and that for the same disk with uh, for a disk with same mass m and radius r is it is i equals to m r square by 2 so here we observe that the moment of inertia for the disk is half of that of the ring which is obvious like uh, not uh, not the factor of half but it is obvious that it must decrease because the mass is uh, coming at closer to the axis similarly uh, when i tried uh, to take three rods and arrange them in the form of an equilateral triangle and each of mass m by 3 and length l the moment of inertia if we calculate we get is i equals to ml square by 6 and similarly if we take a lamina of same mass m and the same side length l for an equilateral triangle what we get is i equals to ml square by 12 again the uh, moment of inertia was uh, uh, going uh, down by a factor of half similarly for, for the case of squares uh, in the case of loop it was coming to be ml square by 3 and in the case of lamina it was coming to be ml square by 6 so I thought maybe uh, maybe this might be very uh, applicable for all regular polygons. So first of all, I tried to uh, prove it for any n-sided polygon. So from here, I considered the uh, n-sided polygon of total mass m and side length l. Uh, this is equivalent to n rods, each of mass m by n and length l. So let's consider three consecutive sides of it and let's con consider r to be its circumradius. So from here what we get is this angle to be 2 pi by n which is very simple as uh, 2 pi will be divided among n sides and so from here what we get is one of the uh, from geometry what we get is r equals to l by 2 sin pi by n this is very clear where r is the circumradius. So the moment of inertia for this uh, system if you calculate uh, on solving it comes out to be this value uh, which is n times m, m by n times l square by 12 which is the moment of inertia of a rod about its center and plus and by parallel axis theorem m into d squared where m is the mass of the rod this is the mass of the rod and this is the distance from the axis to the center of the rod so from here what we get is the i of the loop uh, or the i have named it polygon to be ml square by 4 times 1 by 3 plus cot square pi by n now if we consider the same lamina where the mass is distributed over the whole region so from here, uh, let's assume that sigma is the surface mass density, which comes out to be m by n times uh, r square by 2, 2 pi by n. Uh, we get the sigma. And uh, from here, let's consider this is the lamina. So this can be considered equal to uh, n times this triangle. So uh, for the moment of inertia, we can do this. So from here, first of all, let's try to find the moment of inertia of this triangle or the lamina which is in the shape of a triangle so from here uh, for uh, finding the moment of inertia I took a small uh, element of uh, thickness dx and length 2x tan pi by n and uh, so the dm mass of this uh, strip will be 2x tan th pi by n times dx times sigma and so the uh, small uh, moment of inertia uh, due to this m small mass will be dm l square by 12 the uh, moment of inertia of rod about its center and by parallel axis theorem dm times x square so from here uh, substituting the values uh, what we get is dm times 4x square tan square pi by n by 12 plus x square and it's just calculation after this you can uh, go through them yourself and finally we get again the we get the same result that the i of the lamina is uh, exactly equals to half of i of polygon because uh, this is ml square by 24 and this was ml square by 4 uh, and if we take 1 by 3 common we get ml square by 12 times 1 plus 3 quad square pi by n which is exactly uh, double of this value so uh, after this i felt very happy and uh, I had after this after i had proved this result i felt uh, very relieved but uh, uh, one of my friends <laughs> gave me an even more ge general result that the moment of inertia of any closed 2D loop is twice of the moment of inertia of an object having same mass spread over its surface uniformly. So I was like, wow, that would be great if we could prove that. And he said, I've proved it. Try it yourself. 
I was like, okay, so we'll try to prove this now. Let I've taken any sh- any general sh- 2D shape and uh, I've considered its loop and its lamina or two differently. So let's uh, try to prove it. I assumed uh, the moment of let's say that the moment of inertia of this loop is uh, k times m r square. We know that uh, the moment of inertia is directly proportional to mass and directly proportional to the square of its length factor and uh, I took the r to be the distance of some point, some general point on the loop, which is at a distance r, and this point will be analogously fixed if we uh, scale this uh, figure down or scale this figure up. And the k is a constant which is based upon the geometry of the shape. So from here, uh, what we get is uh, we have assumed the i. Now let us consider the lamina. Now in this lamina, let's assume a small element. which is of the same shape as the original loop but is at a distance x from the center of the loop and x is the distance of the analogous point on the loop and let's assume uh, it, uh, it to be of a thickness dx at the point it's it's not necessary that the dx will be constant uh, over the whole uh, loop but it it it, it is dx at this point so from here the small mass dm of this i have assumed to be alpha times x times dx and uh, again alpha will be some constant and uh, we know that uh, i- this will be proportional to x uh, and by some factor 2 dx so from here if we integrate this we should get get the total mass of the lo- uh, of the lamina which is m so from here we get integrating this uh, over 0 to r because x is varying from 0 to r in this case so from here what we get is m equals to alpha r square by 2 so alpha is a constant which is 2m over r square So from here, the small moment of inertia due to this uh, small element dm will be k times dm times x square because this is a uh, same figure as this. So uh, the uh, f- factor of m and r will be changed, but the k- factor k, which is dependent upon the geometry, will remain the same. So here, basically, we have just scaled it down. So from here, and uh, substituting the dm which we found from above, which is k times 2m by r square times x dx times r square. So now the uh, uh, moment of inertia of lamina will be the integral of this di, which is equals to 2 km over r square times integral x cube dx from 0 to r, which comes out to be surprisingly km r square by 2. So yeah, again we found out that this is exactly the half of this value. so we get that the moment of inertia of lamina is a half exactly half of the loop uh, of the s- uh, same shape so uh, it was an uh, awesome result so i hope you liked it thank you